Welcome to an introduction to infinite series. The goals are to define a convergent and divergent infinite series, as well as to determine if a series appears to converge or diverge. We will not be taking a look at specific convergent or divergent tests. Those will be covered in the next several videos. The main purpose of this video is to develop the idea of what it means for a series to converge or diverge. Since we just finished studying infinite sequences, it's important that we distinguish between an infinite sequence and an infinite series. Remember, an infinite sequence is just an infinite list of terms. So if we take an infinite sequence and then sum the terms, we have what's called an infinite series, as we see here. So to determine if an infinite series converges or diverges, we must consider the sequence of the partial sums. So what that means is, if we have an infinite series here, if we want to know if it converges, we're going to take a look at the sum of the first term, which would be just one, the sum of the first two terms, which would be one plus four, which equals five, the sum of the first three terms, which would equal 14, and so on. And the question becomes, does the sequence of the partial sums, one, five, 14, and 30, converge or diverge. So the sequence is generated by the partial sums of the infinite series. And it's probably pretty easy to see from this sequence, it appears as if this is going to increase without bound, and therefore this infinite series diverges. We'll take a look at a more formal definition in a few minutes. Let's go and take a look at another infinite series. Here we have the infinite series of three divided by 10 to the power of n. So when n is one, we'd have three divided by 10 to the first. When n is two, we'd have three divided by 10 to the second, and so on. And then we'd find the sum of these terms. Let's take a look at the partial sums in decimal notation. Well, the sum of the first term would just be three divided by 10, or three tenths. The sum of the first two terms would be three tenths plus three hundredths, which would be 0.33. And then the sum of the first three terms would be 3 tenths plus 3 hundredths plus 3 thousandths, as we see here in decimal form, which is 0 0.333. And you can see the sum of the first four terms would be 0 0.3333. So the question becomes, does the sequence created by the partial sums, as we see here, converge? It looks like this three is going to repeat forever, and point three repeating should remind you of the fraction one-third. So it does appear that this infinite sum will equal one-third, and therefore we say the series does converge. Let's take a look at a few more examples graphically as well by taking a look at this animation. We're gonna see the partial sums on the right, and then we'll see the graph of the partial sums on the left. So as n increases from one to 10, we're seeing the graph on the left and the actual partial sums on the right. And it does seem pretty obvious from this graph that it is increasing without bound, and therefore we would say this series diverges. Now this next series generated by one over n is called the harmonic series. It's a very interesting series, and we'll take a closer look at this in a later video. But for right now, we're just taking a look at the partial sums on the right and the graph on the left. And it may seem unclear as to whether this series converges or diverges. And we'll come back to this idea in another video. We don't want to spoil all the fun here. The next series we'll take a look at will be one over n squared. And again, we'll be taking a look at specific tests to determine whether a series converges or diverges in the next several videos. And again, looking at these partial sums, it does appear this series will converge, but again, we'll come back to that idea in another video. Let's go and take a look at one more where the terms in the series alternate sign. And again, we're looking at the graph on the left and the partial sums on the right. So do you think this converges or diverges? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Let's go and take a look at a more formal definition of converging and diverging series. For an infinite series, as we see here, 
the nth partial sum would be given using this notation, where s sub n will equal a sub one plus a sub two all the way to a sub n. If the sequence of the partial sums converge to L, we can say the limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sums is equal to L. And if this is true, then the series converges. We can also say the limit L is the sum of the infinite series. And if S sub n diverges, then the series diverges. I do want to mention one more idea for this video. And this is the divergent test for a series. We will see this idea again in many of the other videos. If the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity does not equal zero, then the series diverges. Remember a sub n is the formula that generates the terms in the series. So this is telling us that if the terms don't approach zero as n increases to infinity, then it's guaranteed that series will diverge. Hopefully that makes sense because there's no way an infinite series can converge if we're adding numbers that don't approach zero. So for example, if we have the infinite sum of let's say three n divided by n, and we take the limit of a sub n, this limit would equal three, and since this limit doesn't equal zero, we could say that this infinite series diverges. Now it's also true that if the limit of a sub n doesn't exist, then the series diverges. So for example, if we had the infinite sum of just three n, well we know the limit as n approaches infinity of three n is equal to infinity, which doesn't exist, and therefore this infinite series diverges. And then lastly, if the limit of a sub n equals zero, no conclusion can be made. However, if the series does converge, then the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity must equal zero. That's a little confusing, but what that's saying is if we take a look at this harmonic series, if we take the limit of a sub n, we do get zero. But that does not tell us that the series converges. It tells us that it may or may not converge. But it is true that if it does converge, the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity does equal zero. So it's helpful in a way that it tells us that it may converge, but it's not strong enough to tell us that it does converge. So that'll be it for this video. We'll take a look at these rules again and many other methods to determining whether a sequence converges or diverges in the next series of videos. I hope you found this introduction helpful and thank you for watching.